Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Together we celebrate the Eucharist today. Let's pause. Let us seek our Lord's mercy and forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you are our Redeemer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, the Word made flesh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who are perfect unity and true charity, grant your faithful one heart and one mind, that the body of your church, which rests on the confession of the truth, may flourish in harmony and be made strong in enduring unity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Today we shift to the book of Ecclesiastes, probably the most uh, pessimistic book in the scripture, kind of comes off as, why is it worth living? But we listen through that to hear about the message of Jesus Christ. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanities of vanities, says Corwith. Vanities of vanities, all things are vanity. What profit has a man from all the labor which he toils at under the sun? One generation passes, and another comes, but the world forever stays. The sun rises, and the sun goes down, then it presses on to the place where it rises. Blowing now toward the south, then toward the north, the wind turns again and again, resuming its rounds. All rivers go to the sea, Yet never does the sea become full. To the place there where they go, the rivers keep on going. All speech is labored. There is nothing one can say. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear satisfied with hearing. What has been, that will be. What has been, that will be done. Nothing is new under the sun. Even the thing of which we say, see, this is new, has already existed in the ages that preceded us. There is no resemblance of the men of old, nor of those, who, nor of those to come will there be any remembrance among those who come after them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, not that it is as past or as a watch of the night. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass which at dawn springs up new, but by evening wilts and fades. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O oh Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. In every age, O oh Lord, you have been our refuge. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge.
the Father except through me. Gospel according to Luke. Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was happening and was greatly perplexed because some were saying, John has been raised from the dead. Others were saying, Elijah has appeared. Still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. But Herod said, John I beheaded. Who then is this about whom I hear such things? And he kept trying to see him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. How many have, have know the bishop? Can you know the, how many have personally met the bishop and shaken his hand? Quite a few. How many uh, know the, know about the Pope? We all know about the Pope. How many have met the Pope and shake, shook his hand? Yeah, you have? I haven't. I haven't gotten there uh, with, with this Pope. But the, the, I want us to look at the, the case of the relationship. You know, do I know somebody personally or do I know them because somebody else knows them? Do I know somebody personally and upright and have had a conversation with them and shook their hand and talked with them? Or do I know them because I've read about them, heard about them, or other people have told me about them? What is the, the, the degree line? How close do I know them? Do I know them because somebody knows them, or do I personally know them? In our Gospel today, we meet Herod. Herod is hearing about Jesus Christ, hasn't personally met him, you know, but is hearing, well, he's done this and this. Well, it can't be John the Baptist because I beheaded him. It, you know, is it one of the other prophets? Well, don't you just want to say, well, you know, uh, get an appointment. Go and meet him. Go and see him. Go for it. Don't just hear about somebody through somebody else. Become personally acquainted with him. And it becomes our challenge with our relationship with Jesus Christ. We look back in the beginning as we learned about Jesus. We knew him because probably our parents or our catechists or somebody we knew told us about Jesus. We knew him because somebody else knew of him and, and, and told us about him. It's, it's when we move beyond that, knowing because somebody else knows, that we move into that personal relationship, that we welcome the Lord into our life, that we opened our hearts and that we have taken time and moments to personally encounter him in our lives. Because he's come to us in the Eucharist. Because he's come to us in the Word. Not just that he's come to somebody else, but he's come personally to us. So today as we reflect on this reading, uh, on this Gospel part of the reading, let us first acknowledge that person that taught us about Jesus. Let us give thanks for that person in our life. Again, perhaps a uh, catechist or a grandparent or a neighbor or uh, a parent. And, and in giving thanks for that, recognizing our part of sharing who Jesus is with others. And then as we give thanks for them, let us look at, as we receive Jesus in the Word in the Eucharist today, what is our personal conversation with Jesus like? How can we deepen that relationship with our Lord? And we'll do that in, a, in perhaps a moment of silence now, having heard the Word of Jesus, in a moment of silence after receiving. rise, lifting up our needs and our prayers into our Lord. For our Holy Father and other church leaders, may the grace of God sustain them as they guide their flocks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in leadership positions throughout the world, may the Holy Spirit inspire them in working for peace instead of war and charity instead of greed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those who suffer from chronic illness and those who care for them. May the Lord relieve their pain and uplift their spirits. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, may the hope of Christ burn in our hearts and inspire our sharing of God's message of salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed who have left this world to join the communion of saints, especially Bernard Skip Pancratz, for whom this Mass is being offered. May they rejoice in the loving embrace of the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray also, remembering the person that taught us about Jesus, and pray for the courage to share our understanding and our relationship with the Lord with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now pray through the intercession of St. Joseph. Good is St. Joseph. As you led the Holy Family, watch over our families. Help our family and all families to know and share God's love. In our family relationships, may we find healing and seek to be holy. May our fathers help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus who share our love for him. As foster father of Jesus, watch over all who serve as spiritual fathers. And in a special way, bless our Holy Father, our bishop, and our priests. May they follow your humble example and their fatherly care for the people of God, the Church. With Mary, you raise Jesus the High Priest. You know our need for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests from our families to serve the people of our diocese. May our children and grandchildren hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. Good is St. Joseph. Pray for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received this bread. We offer you, through to the earth work of human hands, that you become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received this wine. We offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It should become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. God, who renew us in your image through the sacraments and your commandments, mercifully guide our footsteps in your paths, that those that through the sacrificial offerings which we bring, we may possess the gift of charity, for which we have taught us to hope, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him you brought us to the knowledge of your truth, so that by the bond of one faith and one baptism we might become his body. Through him you poured out your Holy Spirit among all the nations, so that in a wondrous manner he might prompt and engender unity in the diversity of your gifts, dwelling within your adopted children and filling and ruling the whole church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna.
by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of a body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Francis of Assisi, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer, or let us acknowledge one another with the sign of that peace. Lamb of God.
away the sins of the world, blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. pray with us now at the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at me spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
receive your Lord the sacrament of unity. Grant us, we pray, that living in your house in holy accord, we may possess the peace we hand on and preserve the peace we have received. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and